Hello and welcome to CG Visuals. My name's Zach and in this video we're going to learn how to create realistic fire inside of After Effects and Trap Code Particular 3. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the project file we're going to be working with today is available from VideoHive as part of our Trap Code Fire collection, so let's break things down and figure out how to create this effect. Okay, so when attempting to create an effect like this, the first thing to note is that it's being emitted from a light. So we'll talk about how we're using lights as emitters. As for the sprites, which is normally where I start from, we have to consider the sprites we're going to use, so these will be included in the download link. But just to give you an idea of what's happening behind the scenes, we've got six different fire sprites and one smoke sprite, and they're really going to define the look of the particle system. So let's strip away all of the additional effects and we'll just focus on one of these layers. So we'll talk about what's going on, but I'm just going to go through our particle system step by step first so you will need some working knowledge of after effects and trap code particular but in the emitter section we can choose lights as an emitter we can then define which one of those lights are going to be used we've got some negative velocity going on a little bit of velocity randomization we've also got a setting here where the particles per second are actually being controlled by the intensity of the light Next step is the particle uh, section. So as we discussed earlier, we're using sprites. So we can set the particle type to a sprite. Then we can choose the layer. So the layer, we can select our fire sprite here. And then because they're still frames, we can choose random still frame. If we had three clips that were of an equal length we could define how many number of clips there were and then randomize between those clips. One other uh, important thing I almost forgot to mention is the rotation of the particles. So in Trapco Particular 3 you can um, randomize the rotation. So this will add some random rotation to the particles when they come out and then on, in addition to that I've also keyframed the overall rotation of the particles. I've also added some rotation speed of one and uh, this will control the... Like some of them will rotate faster than others. I've got the life set to 0 0.5, some randomization. There's also a wiggle expression on the life just to give it some extra randomization. The size, this will vary depending on like how big your sprites are got randomization on the size and one of the things I always do is to add some sort of curve to the size over life. Sometimes just a simple ramp for the opacity. I've got the blending mode on screen. Now um, you could get some different effects by changing the blending mode but based on the uh, post processing effects we're going to add on afterwards I'll just keep things on screen. One thing to note is that we are working in 32-bit. As for physics, we've got minus gravity 500. There is some uh, spin amplitude turbulence happening under air here. We've got some basic air resistance set to one. Um, there's also a turbulence field option where you can add additional turbulence. We could also have the turbulence affect the position as well if we did. If we wanted to and there is some basic motion blur enabled as well when you're choosing the shutter angle just make sure that the shutter phase is half of what the shutter angle is and also minus so shutter angle of 100 would be minus 50 uh, 360 would be minus 180 now one of the issues I ran into when using sprites is that as the number of sprites diminished at the top, we start to see this noticeable separation. Now one of the solutions I came up with to this was to use a rough and edges effect. If we turn this on, you can see it's having a rather drastic effect. Um, 
rather than trying to explain every setting, I'll just leave it up here on the screen, but this edge sharpness is something that has quite a big effect. It just sharpens up the edges and helps create a more realistic effect. And we've got a simple uh, expression on the evolution which just keeps it's just a simple time times 100 and that will just simply um, add some evolution to the turbulence of that effect. So we've got another layer responsible for the fire. Now the exact same properties apply. The only difference is that this one is using the other sprite layer, sprite one. Once I had this one set up, I just copied duplicated it and then just selected the duplicate one and, and selected a different particle. So when we enable this one, if we just solo it for a minute, we can see what this one's doing. Again, we've got the same rough and edges effect, which is absolutely vital for achieving a realistic effect here. And we've actually multiplied it over the layer beneath it. I was tempted to use screen, but I was trying to get a more sort of a more realistic look to the fire. Again, like you could change these blending modes and they'll you'll get all sorts of different effects. So the next one we've done here is essentially just duplicated the same effect again, but rather than using sprites, I'm just using basic cloudlets. And um, might be a bit difficult to see, but we've just got the emitter, again, the emitter is set to the light. We've got all the same settings as before. Uh, obviously, we'd reduce the size, otherwise we'd have massive embers. So these ones have got a color over life parameter. So they start off as a, an orange and just go into a slightly more darker red. Again, quite, a, quite an easy effect to do. So this one's got very similar physics settings. I think the only difference between the physics settings on this one and the fire. And we just compare the two. So the embers, we've got more air resistance, less gravity, and the fire layer was minus 500, and this one's got less gravity, and that's just because I don't want the particles shooting up too quickly, not as fast as the fire. We've got more turbulence. Another thing is to set the fade-in turbulence. So I just set that to one, and again we've got spin frequency here. They're very similar settings once you understand them. So as for the smoke, again this was achieved just by duplicating our original uh, setup. Except there's some differences, as with this one I've put the opacity down very low. I'm just going to turn it up here so you can actually see what's going on. Again using the light as an emitter and you can guess it's using the smoke sprite. The size over life is pretty simple, it's just um, a customized ramp which you can select presets and stuff. It's just how I want the smoke to behave. I want the smoke to increase in size quickly and then slowly increase in size and pretty straightforward for the opacity just to fade out over life. So let's have a look at the physics settings for the smoke. There are no fancy shading or auxiliary things going on. Again, this is pretty much the same as the embers, so minus 150 for the gravity. Some extra air resistance uh, too, and then just your basic little bit of uh, spin amplitude. Um, optional whether you want to use effect position here, but there really isn't much going on in terms of physics really. Just a bit of, bit of turbulence and some negative gravity. So that basically covers what's going on here in terms of the particles. Um, we've got this smoke illumination layer here. So because this smoke was so almost barely visible, um, it will be more visible once you put the effects on because that has a glow and intensifies everything. But I just duplicated the smoke layer and with this layer, so it's exactly the same as the smoke, but this time instead of the opacity being on 1 or, or as low as that, it's on 50. However, with a condition that the track mat is set to a luminance mat, so it's using the layer directly above, above itself as a, a luma mat. If we disabled that, 
we'd simply have the entire effect. So we're using a Luma mat and let's have a look at what it's using as its Luma mat. So it's basically just a duplicate of our fire particle system. All we've done is just put a fast blur on it and then hidden it and then just used that as the as the opacity essentially for our smoke. And that's all that's doing. We've, we've got our smoke and then the smoke intensifies its glow towards the fire. So let's have a look at what um, additional effects might be going on. So we've already covered the rough and edges one. Since we were last on the smoke, I'll just talk about what's going on here. So we've just got a simple CC toner. And that's just because the smoke, I wanted it to have a little bit of orange in it. So we've simply added a bit of color correction to the smoke. And then we've got a tint just uh, in case the smoke looked oversaturated. So we're just, just tinting that with a sort of mild orangey color. Again, this is just, you know, little color correction effects. Uh, I've got the exact same thing going on with CC toner and tint on the smoke layers. Uh, the embers here. So they've got an interesting effect called mesh warp. If we reset this, this is what mesh warp comes in as. So what I've done is change the rows and columns to two. And then I've simply selected these points. I've just tried to essentially create what looks like a funnel here. So they'll adhere to this sort of distortion effect that we've got. It's not exactly necessary. It's just that if you've got fire going up in the middle, it'll just tend to create this sort of heat vortex effect, just to add a little bit of extra realism. So let's enable all our layers now. And we'll talk about what these effects are doing. So the quickest way to get through this would be to just open up each one, briefly explain what's going on. And of course, you can pause it and copy the values in. So we've got a turbulent displacement here. Um, and I've just simply animated the turbulence so that it's traveling upwards to simulate heat rising and there's also a simple expression on the evolution to keep it spinning that's using that time expression that we've got. i tell you what, let's actually enable the layer and look at how these effects all build up on top of each other. So we've got the turbulence, then we've got a tint here and this is me trying to essentially simulate log footage where everything's all washed out. Next we'll add a glow and the glow here you can change these effects yourself, but the glow intensity is 0.1. You're using basically a two-step glow, so the next glow that we add will will add on to this. And this is more of a... Um, so we've got one glow that's sort of a tight core glow, and the other glow is a larger radius glow. And actually the second glow is using a screen blending mode. Next, we've got a curves layer. So let's quickly see what's going on. So we're, we're affecting all of the channels here. So basically, before we applied this effect, a contrast curve here. I essentially just dragged it up to this, try and get to the middle of this box here. Then we've got oh, adding a bit more red in, just to try and bring out some more of a red glow near the core. Decided to take a bit of green out just to try and get more of a red effect. Don't want to go too far, otherwise it starts going to more of a magenta or, or rosé. And then here we've got just a, just taking some blue out to get more towards that kind of yellow effect. Again, depending on how your monitor's calibrated and how you change these, it'll end up looking different. You probably won't get it 100% how you want, which is why I added a tritone effect. If we enable this, this is essentially saying that all the highlights are going to be white, all the midtones are going to be this orangey colour, and the shadows are also going to be white as well. And then we've got a 50% blend here. Again, building more effects on top of each other. We've got a simple hue and saturation. Next is a levels. And the levels here, we're not really changing this graph here too much. All we've simply done is change the gamma here it would have been like this we've simply changed it to 0 
And then finally, one more glow, which will complete the effect. Quite an intense glow now with the screen blending mode. We can see what settings are being used here. This 32-bit color correction layer is doing. It's going, taking it from that to that. So this is our final effect. Now, the reason I didn't make this a step-by-step -step tutorial is because the setup time for this was several hours and when I try and squeeze it into a highly edited tutorial I struggle to get it uh, under about an hour and 20 minutes. Now if you do want to watch uh, the full length tutorial on how to create this it is on our channel and I'll link that in the description um, but I just thought it might be faster just to just to kind of do an overview of how this effect is working just show you what all of these effects layers are doing um, another thing we've done is use some sliders control here just for some e ease of life and we've just pick whipped the um, emission rate here we pick, pick whipped the emission rate of each one of these uh, layers to a single slider so that if you want to change how many particles are being spawned you could just do it with one slider rather than having to go through the entire setup. Again, you do need a, a minimum amount of particles to make the effect look convincing, but not a, not a ridiculous number. Now, if you don't want the fire spinning around in circles, we can just go to the transform options of the emitter here and we'll just delete this wiggle expression. So now we can do what we want with this uh, emitter layer. So we could start a keyframe. If you wanted to make a moving fireball or something, we could just start by having it further away in the distance, perhaps. Okay, so tweaked around with the motion path a little bit. Had to increase the emission rate because it's traveling so fast. Had to increase the emission rate of the particles a bit, but this is a sort of fireball that we could create fairly quickly. Also disabled the mesh grid on the embers particles. And of course you could pre-render a bunch of them and uh, create all sorts of inter interesting things. They could even be little meteorites or something. Just pause this and have a look. We still only took about a, a minute to render. I know we're doing on half res, so this will probably, probably take a good few minutes to render at full resolution. But then you'd have a fairly customized fireball asset just for your shot. So again, you can download this uh, project file in its entirety from videohive.net and just search for CG visuals. Of course, we'll put a link in the description, but and this is the project file that we've been having a look at. And we're actually going to be updating this uh, fairly soon with some brand new project files and visual effects which is going to be great and of course if you already have the item on video hive then you just get a sent a notification when an update's ready and you can just download that for free okay so we'll wrap things up there this is just a quick overview of the project file and of course you can download the sprites and have a go at set setting this up yourself um, all the settings that you'll need are covered in this video and uh, yeah let us know what you think and thanks for watching even armed with only a dslr and a few hundred pounds of props and costumes you can still increase a film's production budget by thousands using state-of-the-art but affordable visual effects techniques which you can learn right here so stay tuned for more content and thanks for watching